Hello everyone, and welcome to another game tutorial. And this time, we're gonna delve into Planet Zoo, and explore a nifty low mechanic that centers around the distance of where the animals are unboxed and when the caretakers drop them in their enclosures. If you guys harness this mechanic correctly, it'll allow you to place modded aquatic species into their tanks and pools without having to watch them move around on the land so much. Observe. Here we have a bayou themed tank for some alligator gars, and what should happen due to the heck is that the gars will be placed into the enclosure gate here, but they'll unbox and rebox right here at the wooden dock I set up. And also, by the way, this is not a real hole, this is a flexicolor piece that's colored black, but trust me, it's gonna work. Just pretend that the keepers are walking out of it and dropping the guards carefully into the water. Okay, watch. See? The guards spawn right there. Uh, they're just- oh! They're actually moving this time. Usually they just lie down at the dock and do nothing. Oh, that's convenient. Okay, here's another example. Here we have an orca tank, and it'll work the same way as the gar tank, but the, instead of a dock, it's a water slide. And the entrance is much wider than the animal's actual transversible areas, as a way to illustrate the large size of these marine mammals. Here, watch. And there we go. See how they are quick walking now it looks more like a, just a really awkward slide into the water. Okay, here's one more example. And then we're gonna move on to a disclaimer for using it on terrestrial animals. And then we're gonna move on to a tutorial to show how you can also apply this hack. Here's a tank for some Atlantic herring, and the unboxing area is this tiny little opening that faces into the water. Let's just pretend that the fish are being gently dropped from a plastic bag held by two hands of a staff member. Alright, observe. See? This takes some real ingenuity to get this effect. Okay, now let's cover this on using it for terrestrial animals after we watch them slide down. Okay, so the thing is, the hack does work on the land animals, but there are some side effects, like how the food isn't in the intended dish, and wherever it's placed, it's invisible at the spot, and even when the animals are eating from it, you can't see them. Another issue is that the food enrichment, the ones that only function on the ground, won't be refilled by the keepers, cause Unlike the ones that can be placed in the water and only works in there, they need to be accessed more directly by the keepers, and thus the hack prevents the keepers from going that far into the enclosure. So unless there's a workaround I haven't found yet, I think you guys should just stick to using it for just the full aquatics for now. Now, to clarify what I meant about the animals being unboxed in their enclosures and why it's relevant, well, you see, contrary to what people expect, the Animals are actually unboxed at a certain distance from the enclosure gates. Granted, you can measure that yourself, or you can use this blueprint that I made that will make things easier. Just place it right there and like align it to the enclosure like this. Close it now. Right about here. Then you'll know that the animals spawn right there. Trust me, this this does come part two, what the heck requires. Okay, now for the tutorial. I'm gonna show you guys how to set up a proper tank so that this little hack can be done correctly. First things first, we're gonna start with the layout for the tank, like so. Thank you. 
before we set up the platform for the gate, we're gonna place the water within the barrier, and then we're gonna mark down the border of the water surface so that we can determine the height and the distance of the water's edge to the terrain that the gate is gonna be placed on. Okay, now let's remove the water and delete the wall where the gate's gonna be placed. And then place a flat plateau with the cube terrain stamp that should be slightly higher than the marked water level. Let's trim away at the hill that's inside the tank, and make sure there are no gaps between the actual barriers. Alright, now let's place the gate at the closest point without it snapping to the barriers and having a placement error. Once that's done, we're gonna connect the gate with the tank's barriers and then place the water. Alright, now let's place the unboxing marker in front of the gate so that we'll know the exact spot where the animals will be unboxed for the later steps. Now let's remove the portions of the hill that are below the gate area and the water placement. Okay, now let's remove the water and trim the areas to their thinnest points. Don't worry too much if you see some gaps between the barriers, because turns out the water fills up regardless. And don't worry about the jagged areas left behind either. They're going to be hidden with construction pieces later. Okay, now we gotta place some aquatics into the tank before we apply the gate head because knowing the transversal area is needed for this to work and it will vary depending on the animal obviously. The unboxing marker will also come to play since it's also important to acknowledge the spot where the animals are unboxed for this head to work. Alright, now with the animals transversible area enabled, we are going to pinpoint the narrowest point the animal can walk into the water. Though sometimes the animal tends to be bigger than the area it can transverse, but that can be harnessed as well. Okay, now before the magic starts, we're gonna have to place a platform so that the animals can spawn there after the heck is applied. It can be anything like a dock or even a slide flowing with water, like the examples I just showed you before, but 
For this demonstration, it's gonna be a duck. Also, make sure it's big enough for the animal. If it's not, it probably won't work. Okay, now for the hack. In front of the unboxing marker, we're gonna place down a solid block. The numbers can vary depending on how things go, but what should happen is that the animals would be unboxed in front of the marker inside those blocks, but then rebox themselves and unbox right in front of the blocks on top of the platform, as if the enclosure gate is right here instead of over here. Also, it's important that the keepers have an accessible area in front of the gate, cause otherwise they won't be able to place food to the feeders and whatever enrichment item is placed in the water and functions in there. And be sure to test and see if the animals can be unboxed the intended way, cause if they can't, you might have to make some adjustments. There we go. See? It works really saved me the trouble of making the adjustments. Now for disguising the hacked gate, we can change the color of the blocks to black to portray darkness and then surround it with walls to simulate an open exit. Or just cover this entire thing with a solid wall and add a door in front of it to simulate a keeper entrance. Either way, you can obscure the gate to something like this. It could function as like an immersive feature where the, this building is an obscured station or a shack where fish and other aquatics go through the process of getting acclimated into the new waters in the tank, which actually happens with real life aquariums. With this function and various possible approaches by many creators, you guys can also have a lot of fun making tanks for your fully aquatic mod animals. Well, that's all for this tutorial. I hope this new little hack I found out will help out a lot of Planet Zoo gamers that are avid users of the aquatic mods. And if you guys discover anything else in this mechanic I haven't discovered yet, feel free to share it in your own videos. And as usual, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more future videos. And I'll see you guys next time.